Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to go ahead and take you further with the windshield part. If you remember, last time we finished with the shelled out upper portion of the windshield. Uh, in this video, if we can, I'm going to attempt to get this lower portion that sticks out of the bottom here. I'm going to try to get that done. It's going to take a little bit of work because there's a lot of dimensioning to do. Um, but I'm going to show you a way that, that I've just discovered to be much easier than ways I've done it in the past. See, the problem is... In the past, I've tried to do this entire outline, including the, the inner border and the outer border, and all six of these tabs around the outside. I've tried to do those all at once and then just extrude it once, okay? And um, while part of me was, was thinking that was easy, that took a ton of dimensioning just to get it fully constrained. And so this method that I'm going to show you today works just a little bit easier. And, and what I've discovered over time and what I've read about from, from professionals that do this is that it's better to do things like fillets and things like that in 3D mode when possible, when possible, because it's easier to dimension. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw the, the rectangle on the bottom first, but you'll notice, by the way, I guess before we go, see this 0.67 here. See the bottom of this sticks out 0.67 inches from the bottom of the windshield as we know it. So first thing that we need to do is we need to come and we need to select and do an offset plane. Okay, I'm going to offset from this plane, and I'm going to pull it down a dimension of 0.67, and that brings it down here. I'm going to hit enter. Okay, and basically what I did, if you look at it from the front, you'll see that I created a little floating work plane out in the middle of nowhere, but that just happens to be at the correct distance down. So whenever I come down here, I can now go here on the work plane and create a new sketch. And now I'm drawing out in the middle of nowhere, right? So now next step would be to draw a rectangle. I'm going to draw it here. I'm not going to worry too much about the dimensions. But now I need to go back and I need to make sure they're the correct dimensions. So we can see here the 0.68 means from the right border to the right edge is 0.68. So I'm going to click on the outer border of the windshield to this line. And that needs to be, it's not letting me do it. Let's try this again. Ready? Uh, in fact, maybe I need to project the geometry here. There we go. Now let's try to dimension this line. So this line is 0.68. And then to the left side, I see a 2.22 to the left side. So from here to here. And then I need to go up and down. I see from the bottom edge of the windshield up to here is 0.29. And then the top edge is 2.26. So 2.29 here. and 2.26 here. So that triangle is, or this triangle, that rectangle is placed, it's fully constrained. Um, and now, uh, I, I've done this a couple of different ways. I'm gonna go ahead and fill at the edges here. Okay, so if I come back and I look here, I can see that it says there are four fillets, each of them are radius of 0.15. I'm going to go ahead and do the fillets here because that's going to allow me to do the offset feature in just a second. So 0.15 for this. I'm going to come here. I'm going to click on this line to this line, here to here, here to here, and one more corner. All right, so fully constrained still. That's pretty nice. One more thing to do before I extrude upward. And you'll notice here that it says this bottom rim here is 0 0.05 thick. Okay, that tells us the dimension between, if I zoomed in at all, these two lines here, that thickness is 0 0.05 as well. So let's come back here and we're going to use the offset tool because offset basically says I'm going to take this shape and match it, go to the smaller size, and the amount of offset then is 0 0.05. I'm going to hit enter and that rim is now created and it is fully constrained. So I'm good there. I'm going to finish my sketch. I'm going to come back here with a three-dimensional view, a little ISO view that helps me out, and I'm going to extrude just that rim wrong direction, and I go next, and now we run into an interesting problem. See, every extrusion we've done so far has been a distance, but I can tell here, even if I adjust this distance down to like a 2, right, or a 1, see, 1's not far enough, and 1.5 is not far enough on this portion, but it's too far on this portion, right? So what, what the world do I do? You'll notice, though, on the extents, it gives you a drop-down menu. So let's go look through some options, and one of the options says to next. Go to the next face that's out there. And what happens, you can see it already starting to wrap. It says, okay, well, here's the next border. Here's the next solid shape that we see. We'll go ahead and take it all the way to there. So we click OK. And we notice, hey, look at that. It's good, right, on both sides. 
So we're pretty darn close now, and this is this is how I've differed from past years. See, in past years, I would have had the tabs in there as well. But now I've realized that man, that's a heck of a lot easier to dimension, right? So our last step is to come over here and to start adding all of these little tabs, like this one here and this one here. We need to start adding those in and putting them at the right location. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down. I'm going to get on the bottom view again so I can see the bottom face straight on. And I'm going to do another work sketch or sketch on this work plane. I'm going to go ahead and project the geometry of this inner rim and the outer rim so I can use those for dimensions and things like that. Now they're part of my border. And I just need to draw rectangles. Okay. Um, I'm going to draw this rectangle here. I'm not even going to dimension it yet. So you can tell that I haven't locked into anything and that's on purpose. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I need to come over here and, and we get lucky with this one. Okay. Um, let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, we get lucky. It's 0.05 wide on the side. And if I do the math here, I can see it sticks out an additional 0 0.04. So 0 0.04 out from the surface and 0 0.05 wide. Let's start off with that. So this would be 0 0.04. And this would be 0 0.05. Okay. We get lucky for this one in that it's in the dead center of the, of the shape. Okay. These are not centered, right? But this is in the center of the shape. So instead of dimensioning it top to bottom, I'm just going to horizontally align and say, hey, you know what? The middle of this, in fact, I got a better way. Let's use the coincident constraint and say that this point needs to lie on top of, let's go find it, there, right there. There's the middle of that line. That's fully constrained. Very, very simple, right? Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line down the center. It's going to be a construction line because it's not actually part of my shape. I'm going to lock into this green dot, this midpoint, and I'm going to go down to this green dot, which is also a midpoint. And by doing the green dot to green dot method, I don't have to dimension anything. It's still fully constrained. And the nice thing is, is now I can go and I can mirror. And I can say, you know what I want to mirror? I want to mirror this. Okay. I want to mirror that right there. And the mirror line that I want to use is this this dotted line that I just drew, right? I click Apply, I click Done, and now it's still fully constrained and I have my second tab. That's pretty sweet. So I'm going to do the same thing up here in just a second, but uh, you know, I'm starting to get a long video. I guess I'll go ahead and finish it off. we got two or three minutes more. I need to draw a rectangle up here. Again, not going to worry about dimensions yet. Well, I guess I can. Uh, it, it's 0 0.05 wide and 0.04 away from the surface, right? So you'll notice that if this time, this one's tall. This rectangle up here is going to be wide instead. Um, I accidentally drew it with construction lines. Easy fix there. I'm going to highlight them and just uncheck the construction thing. So now they're regular lines, right? I need to get them in the right place. Easy thing to do, horizontally align this middle line with the midpoint here. So now I can't move up and down, and I just need to dimension it left to right. Okay, so this one here, if this is the one I'm doing, we see that it's 1.94 from the right outer edge of the windshield, but that's to the middle. This is a center line, guys. The long, short, long, short dash is a center line. So that's the middle of it, right? So I need to find a way to, 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 to do this, okay? Um, I don't. There are a lot of different ways to go about it. I'm going to do this, ready? I'm going to place a point right here on the green dot here because that's now they're, they're at the same location, right? They're locked into each other. And now I can dimension from this point out to here. And we said earlier it was 1.94 units, right? Fully constrained. 1.94 is correct, right? Yes, it is. Okay, so just double checking. Not a bad idea. Now, we already drew this mirror line, right? What I can do now is I can go mirror. The feature that I want to mirror is that rectangle. The mirror line is going to be this. I'm going to flip it over that thing, click apply, and I click done. Fully constrained. I got those two. Let's do this one more time and flip it down to the bottom. But to do that, I'm going to need another center line. So I got a construction line going. It's going to go from green dot, green dot, right click and OK. And now I'm going to go and mirror. I'm going to do this feature and this feature. The mirror line is right here this time. Apply and done. So if I do that right, 
Look at this. All six caps done. Finish the sketch. We're going to extrude upwards to next again, just like last time, zooming in to get each one of these individually. Three, four, five, six. Okay. Now I've got it. I obviously want to go the other direction. And instead of a distance, I just want to say, hey, cut it off at the next face. Click OK. Got it. I'm going to right-click on this work plane. I'm going to uncheck visibility so it's not there. And then the last two things are cosmetic. Now that I have this thing done, I'm going to switch this to polycarbonate clear material. That way it's see-through. And I'm going to use the color filter. I'm going to change this. I'm going to highlight the material first, but then I'm going to change it to like this ugly green color that we have here. Check the box, and you have finished the windshield with minimal dimensioning. Hopefully that helps you out. Um, I know my students will really appreciate seeing the new ways that I've done things. And uh, good luck with the rest of your dimensioning and modeling in Autodesk Inventor with the T9 Automobile Blocks vehicle.